good morning and welcome to Beacon Lights virtual worship service. I'm Pastor Clarence Burke and I just pray that all is well with everyone as we begin our service. And I see many of our attendees, you, you are joining us now, so God bless you. We certainly pray that um, all that again that we have a beautiful service in the Lord today. And we're going to start off with prayer and by Minister Carlene Phillips. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Before I pray, just want to remind folks that we would love for you to enter your prayer request for later by using the chat box. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of heaven, oh, we just love you, love you so much, and we thank you for this another day another Lord's Day, another opportunity to come together virtually, oh God, to worship you, to praise you, to magnify you, just to lift you up. We thank you for the opportunity, Father. We thank you for this, a beautiful day, a new day full of new mercies, new grace, new peace, Father God. We just thank you. We thank you for all your blessings, Holy Father. Again, we thank you for this service, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will bless everyone, Father God, as they gather to as we gather together this morning. I ask for a special blessing on our pastor, anointing Father God as he brings the word later. Again, we just thank you for everyone. I thank you for all the families that are represented. I pray for their peace, their prosperity, their strength, and their health, Father. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. 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 Thank you very much, Minister Phillips. We got that we just certainly are so excited about being together once again. It might be virtually, but we are together. We're going to have a selection from Sister Phyllis Morrison, and after that, we're going to have the announcements by Sister Sharon Woods. Yes, my soul, 
Jesus in this place. Uh, Sister Sharon Woods, are you um, are you online for announcements? Sister Woods, are you online for the announcements? Okay, we will um, skip the announcements. We, are, we will skip the announcements for a moment and, and move on with the service to see if we can rectify the situation. See if we can rectify the situation. Um, we are honoring one of our members today who has a special occasion yesterday. And that is our dear sister, Emily, Wakpuda. And I'm going to bring her on for a second because um, if we were in church, we would be doing this. But since we're, we're not in church in the building, we're still going to recognize her at this time. So I just want to bring her up to um, so that um, we can see her at this time. And Emily, I know you can hear me and uh, definitely want you to share with us <laughs> about your big occasion. Hi, everybody. Hello, Emily. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay. Emily? Yes. Emily, you just had a big day last Sunday, and I just wanted everybody to recognize that you graduated from the University of North Carolina with your PhD, and I want you to share with us what that was in. Uh, sure, yeah, I earned my uh, doctorate in public policy. Um, so basically public policy really thinks about the impacts of policies, um, typically governmental. And um, I specialize in science policy as a former chemist, and I think about um, the policies that government enacts to bring good science and innovation to society. Okay. Okay. And since you have that, what do you plan on doing with that? <laughs> uh, I will be an assistant professor at the University of Texas at Arlington. I'll be teaching in their School of Public Affairs, which is a combination of public administration, government, and public policy. And I'll be teaching uh, evaluation research to uh, masters and PhD students. Amen, 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 amen. That, that is just wonderful. I just thank you. Uh, thank you for your contributions to Beacon Light, and we'll be praying for you. But I did, I did want our congregation to recognize what's been going on in your life, and, and it's just a blessing. So thank you again, and just thank you, Emily, for all that you have done. And we'll be talking soon. Yeah. No, thank you to the church. I uh, definitely um, needed my church family throughout this process, and um, but I'm glad that particular process is over. <laughs> Amen. I know you are. I know you are. Mm -hmm. I know you are. Okay. Well, thank you again, and God bless you. And if there's anything we can continue to do for you, please, please let us know. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Pastor. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. Thank you. Now, we have a few announcements um, that I want to share with everyone. And um, number one, please join our Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 630. Uh, the link is on our website. You can find it there. Um, remind everyone to, I want to thank you, first of all, for continuing to contribute to, uh, through your tithes and offerings to Beacon Light. Did you know we have three ways to do that? Number one, you can do it um, by, by Givelify, the app that you can find the link on our website, beaconlightchurch.org. 
Number two, we have a drive-through service on Saturday from 10 till noon that you can drive through and, and just drive through and drop off um, your check, or you can mail it to the church at 403 Cook Road in Durham, zip code 27713. I also want to remind everyone to sign up for our newsletter uh, on our website. You can sign up for that. We will be sending periodic mailings to you to keep you updated on activities at our church. And as always, if you wish to view or listen to the service once again afterwards, that is found on our website. We're going to have a word of encouragement from Minister Jackie Tatum. Good morning, everyone. The inspiration for the word of encouragement comes from or is inspired by Philippians 4 verses 8 through 13, and it is called the adjustment. Sitting alone, walking a trail, awake counting sheep, or flipping through television channels with your remote control in your hand. Your mind takes you on a journey. This journey is new. This journey is one you struggle with the toll that it may be taking on your usual way of life. Your normal activities of daily living and routines have been usurped by restrictions. Where you go, how you go, what you can and cannot do. Prisoner without bars, you still feel barred from your usual definition of life and routines that brought you joy and allowed you a sense of freedom, normalcy. As you reflect on this new normal life in the pandemic of COVID-19, Philippians 4.8 encourages the mindset of the believer. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You are not alone. In every situation, we have an ever-present help. Take time to reset, church, your mind, relying on the promise of God's strength through Christ Jesus, we can do all things. Make the adjustment and overcome. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Minister Tatum. Thank you for that very, very timely and encouraging word. We'll have uh, start off with prayer with uh, Minister Carling Phillips announcing them the prayer request, and we'll have prayer by uh, Reverend Hawthorne. Thank you, Pastor. We have three requests this morning so far. We want to pray for the family of the 90-year-old grandmother, Bessie McGill. We've been praying for her, but she passed and was funeralized last week. We also have a request for our government officials that they will pray and use wisdom in reopening our businesses. We have a request for a friend of one of our members, her name is Venus. Venus lost her brother to COVID-19. Let's pray for that family. Also pray for Venus as it relates to her job. She is on the front line with her daughter. So those are our three requests this morning. Thank you. All right, Reverend Hawthorne, are you there? Yes, I am, Pastor. All right, well, please lead us in prayer. Good morning, Beacon Light, family of Christ. Though we're miles apart again, we come before the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, it is again that we gather before your holy throne of grace. Father, we gather to come before you to offer up our desires, our petitions, 
and to give you our praise, to honor you and magnify your holy and most righteous name. Father God, you are our God. There is nothing too hard for you. There's nothing that you already don't already know. Lord God, you knew of you know of the sickness before we knew. You knew of death before we knew. Father, you know everything that is going to occur in our lives before we become aware. So God, I just lift up to you right now those names on the prayer list, Father. Those requests on the prayer list, Father, because God, you already know about them being the omniscient God that you own. Lord God, not only hear our prayer, but Father, respond to this. Make it known to those who requested the prayers, Father, that you are working on their behalf. Father, I just thank you and glorify your holy and most that righteous name this morning. Father, knowing that you gave your holy and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we may have a right to eternal life. And thank you, thank you for that this morning. We want to hear what we do. If Jesus had not born the Catholic cause, it's blood and blood that we might have told in things like us. Might have the right thing to know. We can bless him. And take our hearts to the state of the spirit. And he will be called. Hear your son. We can call our fear, we can call it a blessing. We can call it a blessing. We can call it a blessing. We pray a blessing for all of us. We only need it this morning. So it is easy to see that this day. And the time is open, 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 in the White House of the United States. You need to know what you're talking about. But now you already know the truth. How do you actually know the truth? Let me be done and the whole thing is done. You know me. Such evil as if we have not seen. Even as that suggests Mm. Hallelujah. Even if that suggests injection of disinfectant to do away with the coronavirus. But Father, we know that's not just even if that's pure ignorance. Most children of today know not to drink disinfectant materials. Father, we, his evenness is shown as he ordered that people go back into a place, a meatpacking house that's infected with the coronavirus. And not only that, Father, he tells them, if they stay home from work, they will be fired without any employment insurance compensation. Father, this country, this world needs you today. Lord, I know you know all about it. But Father, I pour out my heart to you. Because it hurt deep down within my soul to see what's going on in this country and in the world. Even non-believing leaders of the world, Father, I'm not as openly blatant and dismissive of you as he is. Oh, he attempts to call your name. 
But Father, you know it's hard. And you tell us in your word, God, that, <laughs> hallelujah, you tell us in your word that what exists in a man's heart proceeds from his mouth. Lord, we pray your blessings upon the sick and shuddering and throughout this country, throughout the world, and particularly, Lord, those in Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church. We pray, oh God, for our pastor. Father, that you will keep him saved from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord, that you will continue to lead him and guide him in the path that you would have us to go. Father, we may determine some way, but God, he is our leader, and you, we ask him that you lead us through Pastor Bird. Father, Father, we pray for Minister Tatum and Minister Phillips, oh God. Father, teach us, lead us, guide us, instill your word within us that we will boldly speak your truth regardless of what the circumstances of the consequences may be. Because we know, oh God, that you have told us in your word that you will stand by us, that you are with us. <laughs> Father, again, bless the sick and the shut in, Father. Because, Father, we we come before you knowing that you are a hill and nothing can hide from you. Reach out to those who are sick. Heal their bodies. We pray for Sister Jackie Fuller right down the street who has been assaulted by that coronavirus. Father, we thank you that she's doing well, but Father, we ask you to continue her to a road of full recovery. And Father, we pray for her husband, Victor. Protect him while he's there taking care of her, Father. We pray for her children, their children. Father, who may be frightened at this time, not knowing the outcome, but God, I believe I believe just from prayer and faith in you, God, that she will have a full recovery. And I pray that you touch her children, that they will know that mommy will be well. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, if there is anything in our hearts today, Father, that is not of you. Father, we pray that you will remove it in the name of Jesus. We reject it. We renounce it. We owe in the mighty name of Jesus because we know that it is, it is of Satan and we want nothing of him within us. Move by your power, Father. But nothing is impossible. Now, Father, bless, continue to bless the service today. Let us be inspired by the song, by other prayers, by your word, the word that you have given, Pastor Bert. Let it be food to our souls. Let us be guided by your spirit to walk uprightly until the time that we shall meet again in this virtual reality of spirit. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We extol you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. We just thank you, Reverend Hawthorne, for that really soul-stirring prayer. And uh, we need to be prayed up with one another. So let's continue to pray for one another during these very, very difficult times. Another selection from uh, Sister Phyllis Morrison. And I'd just like to say, first off, um, happy anniversary, Pastor Burr. Today would have been the day that we celebrated your anniversary. So today is still your anniversary, but we will be celebrating you a little later on. Thank you. Yeah, no one's so faithful. 
Amen. 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 Oh, my goodness. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you for your presence that sustains us uh, during these difficult times. Father, I pray for the message that I'm about to share, Father. I pray that you be with me in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today I want to talk for a few minutes another encouraging word from Psalm 27, the 27th Psalm, the 27th Psalm. And the topic today is confidence in God's protection. Confidence in God's protection. You know what? We have our moments. Each of us have our moments when we wonder, how is this going to end? What is going to happen? And unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, we don't know the answers, but God does. But God does. It's our job to be faithful and steadfast in the Lord. It's our job to look to the Lord when we go through situations. It's our job to keep the Lord first and foremost in our minds and recognize the fact that he is control. He is in control. So from Psalm 27, I just want to spend a few moments with five verses from that passage. And the interesting thing I like about this passage is that it emphasizes God's protection during troubling times. Now, this is a psalm that was written by David. And I have a few points I want to lift up from this psalm. The first one is that David was determined not to fear his enemies because of God's presence. Let's look at that very first verse. It reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing David had was confidence in the Lord. Now, David had his troubling times. Let's not be mistaken and think that, that David was like this all the time, because he had times where he was fearful. He had times when King Saul was after him, trying to kill him, that he worried about the people who were his friends that were being slaughtered because they would not share where David was. He had times where he wondered, Lord, where are you? And if we be honest with ourselves, we all have those times where we wonder, Lord, where are you now? In another Psalm, David even said, my foot almost slipped, which means he almost, he almost forgot what God had done for him in his life. And I encourage us to remember what God has done for us, my brothers and sisters, what he has done, how he has cared for us in our lives. So we see in this very first verse again of Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now let's look at this for a second. The Lord is my light. What does this really mean? Well, light represents deliverance from darkness. Think about it. When we're walking in the darkness, don't we wish we had a little more light? When you go outside on a moonlit night and you can't see very far ahead of you and you hear some noises in the distance and you wish you had your light. So when he says, the Lord is my light, the Lord is the one that delivers me from darkness. In John 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. And then again, in John chapter 9, verse 5, he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is still in the world, and he is still the light of the world. Again, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
He's my salvation. David is saying this because the Lord delivers him from his earthly enemies. He says that he is my strength because God was his stronghold. God is a refuge to David during troubling times, during stormy times. And I dare say that he is our stronghold now. He is our strength. And he says, of whom shall I be afraid? If God be for us, who can be against us? With this type of protection, all we need to do is focus on the Lord, and he will get us through these troubling times. And he shares some personal testimonies in verse 2. He said, when the wicked came against me to eat my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. David saying is when the wicked, he, he paints a picture of when his, his enemies came to him, they were like wild animals that were out there waiting to tear his flesh up. You know, there will come times in our lives where people will be waiting for us and we know that they have nothing good in mind for us. There will be times in our lives that we will have situations like we're going through with the virus, where the virus seems to be waiting for us. They seem to be intent on destroying us, but let it not destroy our faith. I want to share another passage from Psalm, verse, Psalm 10, starting at the verse 8, verse 8 of Psalm 10, 10 where it says, he sitteth in the lurking places of the village. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. He lies and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lies and, 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 and waits to catch the poor. And he tries to catch the poor when he draws him into his net. He crouched and humbled himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. And what this is saying from Psalm 10, that's how the enemy is. They sit and wait and they lurk on us. They're lurking and they're waiting. They're seeking opportunities to invade us. My brothers and sisters, as we are here under the uh, stay-at-home orders of COVID-19, we have to recognize that there is an enemy that is out there that is seeking and lurking. And it's up to us to take the necessary precautions to not allow that to happen to us. You know, I know if you've seen in the news recently, you've seen some uh, North Carolina churches have, have, have sued the uh, North Carolina government because they want uh, freedom of religion. They want to go back into the church. They want to worship. They, want, they, don't do, they do not want the government to dictate how they worship. But my brothers and sisters, we are staying at home for a reason. Because if we are released too soon, that enemy that is lurking and waiting for us just might find us. And after all, my brothers and sisters, we are the church. It is not the building. As long as we are meeting, as long as we are tuning in through technology, we are still worshiping. Yes, we long to be together, but let us be cautious. And I wanna share with you, my brothers and sisters, that as far as Beacon Light is concerned, that we will not be back in the building assembly together in worship until we are confident that it is safe for us to do so. You know, Jesus cared for the least of these, the least of us. And when, when we make considerations about when we're going back into the building, we have to think about the least of us. We have to think about the elderly among us. We have to think about the compromised among, among us. We have to think about those who are susceptible to this virus and the ill effects of it. That is the enemy. Yes, it comes to eat our flesh. After all, the job description of Satan is to steal, kill, and destroy. 
we have the guidance to be prepared against this evil. There is no guarantee that we will not succumb to it. But I encourage us to have faith in the Lord and recognize that one day we will be back together. But we will wait on the Lord and not rush. And we will have patience, my brothers and sisters. David goes on in verse three of Psalm 27. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. What David is saying is even though I see an army circling around me, I am confident in you, Lord. You are my strength, Lord. Even though they confront me at my door, you are my strength. And see, David had lived long enough to see the Lord work in his life. And we have lived long enough to see the Lord work in our lives. So we need to have confidence in the Lord during this troubling time. The second point I want to lift up is that David desired to live in the presence of the Lord. Isn't that the desire of all of us, to live in the presence of the Lord? Let's elaborate. Look at verse 4 of Psalms 27. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David is saying that the secret to his confidence in the Lord is his communion with God. If you look at the very first part of that verse four, he says one thing, one thing. David is singularly focused. He knows what he wants and he's determined to get it. And that one thing is the desire to always be with the Lord. He wants to be with the Lord. He wants to behold the beauty of the Lord. He wants to witness the harmony of God's perfection. Isn't that what we want? One thing I desire is the presence of the Lord. And that presence does not necessarily come with being in a building. Yes, we long to be in the building, but as long as we focus on the Lord, he is with us. But let's look at the second part of that verse. One thing I desire of the Lord, that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Yes, David desired to be in the temple. David desired to be among God's people and worship. That's what we all desire. And there were times during David's life in another song when he was on the run from Saul, he even mentioned that, that that's all he wanted to do was to go back to the temple one more time. Because in the temple, there is fellowship. In the temple, there is communion. In the temple, there is praise and worship. And one day, we will be back in the church. One day, we will collectively be together in praise and worship. But until that day, we are praising the Lord in place. We are celebrating the Lord in place. For with the Lord is safety. With the Lord is security. With the Lord. 
is his presence. The 23rd Psalm, verse 6, says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We don't need to be in a building to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We don't necessarily need to be in the building right now to know that goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our life. I know I have a testimony of how good, how good God has been to me. And I know you have testimonies of how good God has been to you. And the fifth verse of Psalm 27 reads, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. What he's saying is, what David is saying is, for Lord, you are my hiding place. For when trouble is all around me, I will hide in you. I will hide in you. So no matter what we're facing, my brothers and sisters, remember that the Lord is our pavilion. He is that place that we can go to be with him. And he says that you shall hide me. Hide me from the troubles of the world. Hide me from the tribulations that are going on. Hide me from evil that is lurking and seeking opportunities to come in. And he concludes this part with saying, he shall set me high upon a rock. Now let's look at what he's talking about. Back in those days, if you were in battle with your enemy, you desired to be on higher ground. You desire to be higher than they were so they could not reach you. You know, if you look at all these forts that are built in Europe and other places, most of them are built of high on rocks. Why? So they can be easily defended when the enemy tries to come up on them. So that's what David is saying. He shall set me high upon a rock. He shall set me in a fortress high above my enemies. He shall protect me by separating me from my enemies. As we looked at the topic of confidence in the Lord, David is talking from personal experience. He is talking from what he's been through in his life and how the Lord has protected him. Again, that very first verse, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We cannot say that with confidence, my brothers and sisters, unless we have been through something, unless we have seen God working in our lives, unless we have seen deliverance from situation in our lives, unless we have seen our enemies fall down before us, unless we have seen God protect us and surround us with that hedge of protection. So at times like this, we need to lean upon what God has already brought us through and recognize that we still can have confidence in his protection no matter what is knocking at our door. David had confidence. And I encourage each of us to have confidence. But David's confidence came through his relationship with God. And that's the same place that our confidence comes from, our relationship with God. 
So during these times when most of us are restricted in movement, let us spend more time with God because we are never restricted from him. So God bless you. And I certainly pray that this message has been an encouraging message for each and every one of us. Again, Psalm 27, confidence in God's protection. And we're gonna close out with the song that we are so used to, We Are the Church. So allow me to pray one more time. Father, I thank you again for blessing these your people. I thank you, Lord, that we can have confidence in you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your presence is always with us and can never be restricted. Now, through your grace and through your love, we depart from one another, but we're spiritually connected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you.